All right, we're back. Uh, you're with the Man Cave Gamer, and I'm back really quickly after just having done an unboxing, which is something that I don't normally do. He says this being his third unboxing video in a month. Um, but I just uh, unboxed a really cool miniature, um, which I got uh, recently, and then unboxed the finished paint job uh, commission on that miniature. Um, and this arrived in the mail. Now I. <laughs> I haven't opened this, so this could be a very short, very embarrassing uh, video. But I recently went on a spirit quest. <clears throat> um, you know, one of those things where you see in um, in a YouTube video or somewhere, um, or in in a book, something really, really fascinating. You're like, I really want that, um, and then you forget about it for like a year, and then you realise like, how did I forget about that? That I, I need that in my life. So that happened to me when I watched a video uh, over a year ago, I think, um, about the Royal Game of Ur. So this will be a board game, <laughs> unboxing and reveal. Now the Royal Game of Ur, if you don't know, it's an old uh, Sumerian, Babylonian um, board game, racing game, they have at the British Museum. Um, very, very old, very delicate, very amazing how wonderfully uh, well-crafted this game is. Now, I always want, as soon as I knew that it existed, I had to have one. Unfortunately, um, the only ones that you could buy were like 500 Australian dollars plus then like $100 to ship it, um, which were very, very nice, very, very wonderful replicas, um, which I would have loved and cared for for all of my days. But um, we're still about... 800 uh, subscribers and about 3,000 uh, hours before uh, monetizing this YouTube channel. So I will not be getting uh, $700 games delivered uh, for any of my videos. But I did find um, a possible solution just a few weeks ago on Etsy uh, from Spain, would you believe? So I can't remember at all. Um, I was not expecting this to arrive for months, so I can't remember any of the details, but we should find out if this is, uh, in fact, the Royal Game of Ur, which I ordered, and then, if it's as amazing as I hope it is, amazing as it looked in the pictures, we should definitely give a shout out uh, to the maker, and you guys can decide whether this is something that you might need in your lives as well. Um, oh, I can't wait if this is if this is what I think it is. It's getting played immediately, um, and then maybe they, they'll do there'll be a rules of fun video um, about the rules for playing the game. But as soon as this arrived, the packaging was just so amazing. I'm like, I pretty much have to do a an unboxing video, not just a how to play video. Now, again. There seems to be two of these things. Um, did I order two? Oh my god, did I order two? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Did I order two? <sighs> that explains the massive bill. Let's find out. It definitely wasn't five, six hundred bucks. So that's a good thing. Oh, this person takes pride in their work. Um, whoever they are, again. Oh, if it's what I think it is, I'll definitely link in the description below. Oh. This, is, this is tense. This is tense. This this side is flat. This side has some bits to it, so I might flip it over and do this side. Looks like a frame. Okay, okay. Something's happening here. Ah. <laughs> yes. This is indeed, I can tell from the dice, first of all, uh, first of all um, because the original um, Sumerian game, which is in the British Museum, has these, not pyramidal, tetrahedral uh, dice which you roll to play the game and these very definitive sort of markets so the first thing I'm going to do is see what the quality of these are um, 
because a lot of the versions that I saw were sort of cheaper versions of Royal Game, were even like cardboard ones that you could get, um, quite old looking cardboard ones you can get. Um, but none of them had sort of original looking things. So these in the Royal Game of Ur are stone. Now these are not stone. I want to say it's some sort of plaster. So it's all that, it's all that tap to it. Um, painted plaster of Paris, maybe? Um, could not be sure. Maybe it's, uh, you know, there's a description in the thing. Oh, this is like a lid. Oh, this gets all gets shut into the back of the box. That's neat. That is a neat feature, which I wasn't expecting. Royal Game of Ur, I'll, I'll put a picture of the original, is this really sort of sexy T-shaped, goblet-shaped uh, box that it comes in, and it has a drawer inside. Um, which is super cool. Uh, uh, here we go. I can see a, I can see a problem. Um, might just be a problem for me. But look at all these wonderful bits. I don't know how durable they are. Um, I wouldn't throw them around by the looks of it. I wouldn't play it with your particularly raucous friends. But over here, we've got a little bit of our dice um, have chipped off which is why I think this might be a kind of a plaster cast or pressing rather than an actual stone. Here it is. All right, it's come, it's come bang off there. Um, and that's kind of chalky. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's just coming apart now. I've made it worse. Maybe, oh God, I'm gonna stop touching that because that, is ruining my dice. Um, I don't know, maybe worthwhile giving it a varnish or something. Hey, if you know how to keep these plastery things together, I mean, they work as dice. That's something that they do. I wonder if that's what this bit's for. I don't know. Royal Game of Ur, it comes with instructions. Fantastic. Okay, simple game, two sides of paper. So, I think if we flip this bad boy over, we are going to see the Royal Game of Ur. And there we have it. Lovely. A um, little bit more... Um, oh, doesn't, quite, doesn't quite sit flat by the looks of it. Looks like something... Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it looks to be sort of label of the maker. It's a little bit uh, simplified in the designs. Um, I don't recall the images looking quite like that, but they could have been. Look, I have been known to binge purchase uh, things. And yeah, okay. It's got all the bits that I need. It's got the instructions that I need. It's got the fancy sort of original dice. It will definitely be getting played. Um, the surface looks like, you know, printed onto some sort of cardboardy thing and then maybe lay it onto a, yeah, MDF uh, top. So I thought it would be a bit more hand painted, hand crafted. Uh, let's see how board goes all right. Um, Move you guys on. There are certain areas of the board um, where you can't get taken and overtaken and stuff like that. All these are symbols are rather important. So um, looks like they are in the instructions. But again, I'll do a how to do the rules video. Um, this was two hundred bucks, I want to say. So. Um, half the price of the Royal Game of Ur as it originally looks in its sort of uh, goblet styled fashion. So, mm -hmm. half price, mm -hmm. I'm pretty happy. Um, that dice is, is, a bit of a, is a bit of a worry. Not so much I'm worried about the dice, you know, oh my God, it, it fell apart, you know, money back, blah, blah, blah. Um, but if, just if that's going to be the fate of some of the other pieces, that worries me. I'm sure 
you could 3D print them a bit and get them and get that sorted. I'm just checking to see what it is that might be causing it to not be be flat. Um, doesn't seem to be the part in the middle. Maybe it's the table. Uh, benefit of the doubt might be wobbly because of the table. Very nice, like attempts. You know, even though it's printed, it's obviously printed. Um, the squares are very square. Um, you know, a nice attempt to have a sort of aged look in the background. Okay. Um, look, as far as you could go on like eBay and stuff and find Royal Game of Earth, which looks just like a proper board game with like that sort of raised cardboard board in the middle and you sort of roll whatever plastic bits that you have. So as far as avoiding plastic bits and that sort of new age look uh, to it, I'm happy. I'm happy that that's a, you know, nicer sort of rendition of the original. Now, as I've been talking, I think I remember that I in fact got another game, which I don't know the original name of, I'm sure I will, but I play a video game called Mountain Blade, um, and one of the things you can do, big massive multiplayer medieval thing, one of the things you can do in the game is play board games in the taverns. And one of them is called Talbot, and I think this might be Talbot. So when I say 200 bucks, or whatever it was, um, that's for two games, so really, that cost, that version of Royal Game of Earth cost a fifth, or a sixth, or a seventh, for the shipping, than the original, so, not bad, um, honestly, if it weren't for that chip in the dice and uh, wobble on the table, I would hands down say buy them, get one. And it is, this is, I wonder what it's actually, what it's actually factually called. Um, because it's probably not Talbot, because that's probably a name that they use in the game. Let's have a look again. Nice age look, similar. So, I mean, the two boards, very similar design, obviously just uh, changing over what's on top and the pieces underneath. I'm wondering, it's got the same little shelf and it does. Here we go. Now, right here. Now is where we start to worry. Same sort of clay miniatures, perhaps. So, what is the quality going? Oh, it is Talbot. Um, they must have stolen the original game for Mountain Blade. Um, okay, Talbot. This is like a checkers, like a sort of cross. Checkers cross. I like that. Look at look at that little dude. That cranky looking. He's the king. Um, normally, this piece in the middle, this, this spot where the king starts, has a different like sort of symbol. Um, so you know that's the king spot. Um, but I do love that gnarled sort of old whalebone Viking sort of look to that piece, which is lovely. Um, if I recall, these. Other pieces will correspond to the colours, and I do not see any chips, any bits. Look, um, on the one hand, would I have been over the moon if the dice and the pieces were like a, a rock, like a polished rock? Absolutely. Would I have paid 200 bucks for two complete games um, and expect that? No. Um, Probably not, especially, and look, obviously this part's printed and all that stuff, and I used to, <laughs> secret shame, I used to have an Etsy page um, where I made some furniture and stuff, um, as simple designs that I made, and Etsy pages are tough, um, trying to make things as well as you can, um, but also as reliably and cheaply as you can, so you can actually turn a profit, there's not much to be made, um, profit-wise, so, looking at this, Two games that I wanted, one of them um, medieval in nature, um, and I can't wait to sort of show my friends how to play, and another one based on a 4,000, 4,500 year old uh, Sumerian board game. Um, being a history nerd and a game nerd, I'm well, I'm well happy to have these. Um, these will be great for the collection. They're going to go on 
the board game shelf. They're going to come out um, as as much as I can over the next couple of days, couple of weeks. And when my history friends come over, they are definitely going to come out and have a go at these traditional, ancient and medieval board games. Look, for 200 bucks, make up your own minds, but I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. So, get in the comments below if you have a different opinion or if you agree. Um, I'll send a link to the designer and builder. Um, send a comment if you want to learn how to play the game. Um, I'll, I'll put up a video of the rules and whatnot. Um, or just some videos of us playing and enjoying a game that has been around for way longer than most, um, no, all countries that we live in and uh, societies that we have. So this game, so old, so can't wait to play it. Talbot, favorite of mine. Um, I'm gonna be having a good week. I hope you guys are too. Stay safe, stay well, keep gaming. Madcap Gamer, goodbye.